Thanks a lot for your time. And uh, okay. how um, how do you think the book translated to to film? Uh, I think the film is very very good. You know, I've seen it a number of times now. I like it very much, and I think in some aspects it's, it's certainly uh, it captures what I was trying to get across much better than my book. Too. Yeah, mm. and um, were you happy with uh, Reese's performance? Yes, yeah. Well, that, that was a given right from the word go. Yeah. I saw it in in the um, in the extras that. Uh, um, that you met him at a Super Furry Animals gig and That's you right. had a bet. You know, well, this is in 96. Uh, yeah, it was 96, he, just before the uh, the release of the first album. Had you seen him a lot before, prior to that then? Or? No, it was the first time I met him. Really? So yeah. that was, was it a drunken bet that turned good? Or? Uh, it wasn't a bet, really. It was more of <laughs> well, a promise. Promise, yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, a drunken one, certainly, <laughs> but, uh, and one that turned good. <laughs> Superb. Um, I mean, during the film... Uh, Obviously, you're you're exposing I don't know the RRA into drugs, etc. Whatever. I know the book came out a long time ago. Was there any ever comeback from uh, anyone that's uh, I don't know was mentioned in the film at all in, in the book? In the book, uh, no. There's been comebacks from people who weren't mentioned. You know, sort of yeah. say, like they say. To, I mean, I was only not mentioning them to protect them. You know, and they would say, "Hey, hold on, I introduced you to him, not <laughs> that <laughs> mythical person he wrote down in the book or something like that." So the, there were complaints from that from that sort of quarter. But. Yeah, because in because um, you had a lot of connections with other CIA, IRA, yeah. mafia. But the mafia is not where in the film, at least, is not really mentioned at all. No, no. I mean, there's a lot, lot of sort of my um, smuggling ex- exploits that simply had to be left out of the film just to sort of uh, you know reduce it in, uh, in, in content really to make it make it. Uh, you know, less than two hours. <laughs> yeah, no, sure. If there's one bit that you could, a uh, couple of pieces that you could put from the book into the film, a bit of a meat in the mafia, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What What would they like to deal with? Uh, well, they, well, you don't cheat them, you know. So, uh, and uh, they rarely put themselves in a position where they can be cheated. Uh, I was scrupulously honest with them. I found them very efficient and scrupulously honest with me. Great stuff. What well, is there anything that you would change about the film? Uh, other than adding things, no, there's nothing I would uh, take out, you know. I mean, unless one gets to sort of like vain things where I, you know, that makes me look a bit goofy or that makes me look silly. I mean, I suppose I could go through <laughs> the film and find out instances like instances like that. But were you were you on set for a lot of the um, a lot of the filming? Fair bit of it, some of it. Uh, I suppose a total of about probably about ten percent of it in total. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you, you yourself have been in uh, I know, sort of small roles in Ecstasy, Human Traffic, Killer Bitch. Yes, yes. Any, anything else sort of coming up? Uh, I was in Heartbeat as well as, as, as a magic mushroom salesman <laughs> for one episode, but there's been no Oscar or nominations or uh, kind of offers or big roles. But do you get approached uh, a lot to you know for, for to do small, small things parts. like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, how do you choose you know which ones you'll take up and which ones you don't? Uh, well, I've taken, I think I've taken them all up so far. I don't think there's any that I've been asked to do that I've said no to. Some haven't sort of come to fruition for various other reasons, you know, either not been here or, you know, sort of busy or they've changed their minds. So. Yeah, yeah. And um, on, on the musical front, then, you've also done, obviously, the, well, the song with uh, Super Animals with the song and Payne and Lee Harris. Uh, is there anything else on the on the musical sort of venture that... Uh, uh, yes, you? there's... Uh, there's uh, Carve, we used to be the bassist for the Happy Mondays. He and I did a sort of collaboration. I did a collaboration with Peter Hook, uh, yeah. and uh, also likely to do one with the Popes. Uh, it was kind of an offshoot. Shane McGowan, of, yeah, yeah. So kind of offshoot of, of the Popes, really. Um, I think that's it. That's on the but, right. But the the the, uh, the new order, uh, Peter Hook one, is that? Was that cut, has that come out or is it coming? Yeah, it's it come out under the title Free Base. It's, it's, oh, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Free Base. Yeah. Where uh, I do the lyrics and the spoken oh, word. Oh, okay. Thing. Superb. Um, so, how's how's life now for Howard Marks? Fine, fine. No, I mean, better than ever, really. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the story, it's been a while, you know, you know, since writing the book. I know there's a few problems with the, with the licensing, etc. Mm. But, um, is there sort of a fundamental message that you wanted to get across in the book, let's say, and, and the film? Yes, I mean, you know, as far as personally wanted to get the message across, it would be, uh, you know, to legalise marijuana. Really, that's uh, that's the main thrust. 
Yeah. Which, uh, what's, uh, what, what's, you know, what's, uh, from a standpoint, you know, you're obviously a spokesman for that, mm -hmm. that cannabis um, legalisation. What's, what's the worst thing you think that, what's the most negative effects of cannabis? Uh, it's illegality, you know. <laughs> And uh, you know the, the the fact that you can get imprisoned and have your life ruined by choosing something which uh, you did to pursue your own happiness. Yeah, I mean the, the drug, you know, the drug sort of smuggling area cartels now. I think it's really changed from the time that obviously you were involved. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it it has changed. Uh, I think inevitably, you know, as as the penalties for for uh, distributing it and smuggling it increased, then you just get harder and harder nuts left to doing it. You know, because most people want to lead law-abiding lives. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And um, I mean, obviously, now you go around on and sort of doing. Sort of tours and speeches I've seen you at various festivals as well mm. it wasn't very good you know, what do you think that so many young people see you as that folk hero image uh, it, obviously it's got to be dependent to a large extent on, on the uh, uh, liking of smoking marijuana so that would be you know, possibly the strongest element in it and the other thing probably my age knowing that they can as a head still go into that sort of other arena <laughs> Of uh, you know academics, uh, debaters, and uh, you know more established, respectable parts of the society are still open to me. Yeah, is that because of your well, the Oxford sort of yeah, yeah that Oxford, basically all because of the uh, the Oxford background and its consequences. Yeah, yeah and so you mentioned on in the film that there was um, a few connections from Oxford that sort of led you into that sort of industry. Yeah. Um, were there quite a few that sort of helped you when you were, when you came out, as it were? No, I mean one or two, um, but uh, very very few really. I mean I, I didn't sort of get to know the King of Nepal or anything like that <laughs> when I was a student. Um, but there were a few, yes. Yeah, and uh, I mean in your the whole part of your life that you know the, the drug smuggling element, what was probably the worst thing? That happened to you. Your the, the the lowest step. Well, the single most. The low, lowest point of it all. Yeah. Right? Uh, so being in prison, hearing that my son had uh, broken both his legs by uh, falling off the roof. You know, you just realise you, you, your impotence and that you know you, you can't do your duty. You know, can't uh, do anything about anything. Did you think you were? So, you've been quite lucky in your career, so, yeah, as it yes. were. Yeah. No, I feel uh, very lucky and well blessed. Yeah. What? Why do you think that's been? Just calculated decisions that you've made, or luck? <laughs> Just luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, was there? Is there a lot of other sort of revelations that, that you had that literally, for whatever reason, couldn't be printed? Revelations? No, I don't think so. No, I did, uh, tried to say as much as I could. Yeah. Not quite sure what you have in mind. Um, no, anything. I don't know for sort of legal reasons or I don't know protecting people that you just things. Oh, that I see. Would, would, like someone famous. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Have I ever seen the Queen smoking dope? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, there's. I mean, I, I wouldn't on principle sort of uh, answer that. I, mean, I don't believe in smoking people out or anything like that. No, no, fair enough. But, that comes uh, totally across. So there, there would be a few of those, you know, that public might think, well, I'd never realised he would have had a joint or something like that, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, Nothing really uh, beyond that.